In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can get your LEGO Spike Prime robots conducting spin turns using Python code. Now what a spin turn is, is basically just your robot sitting still in the one spot and just spinning around on the spot. Uh, these kind of turns are useful for when you're in tight situations. Okay, so let's get started today by turning on your robot and loading up the LEGO Education Spike app. Once you are into it, make sure you click on the new project button in the middle of the page. Give it a meaningful name, such as Spin Turns. Click on the Python option and click Create. Now once the editor pops up, just minimize the knowledge base and the console. Delete the code that's already in there. And make sure you connect your robot either via Bluetooth like I have, or using the white USB cable in your kits. Um, once you are connected, you will see all the motors and sensors and which ports they are connected to. All right, so let's get started on coding this robot. We're going to start like we usually do on line number one with the from spike import motor pair. Okay, just quickly going over that again, we've got a library of code called spike that has been written by some other smart programmer. And from that library of code, we are importing a certain section called motor pair. And that's going to allow us to get our movement motors, which we've got two of, which can control our wheels. We're going to get those um, motors working as a pair, so at the same time. Uh, the next line of code is just going to tell the computer which ports our motors are plugged into. So you need to give your motors a name. I'm going to call mine movement motors, but feel free to call that whatever you'd like. A lot of people use wheels, a little bit shorter, but you can copy me if you'd like with movement motors. So movement motors equals motor pair. And we're just going to tell it which motors are going to be paired up here. So we've got them in ports B and ports A. So you can see up here, these are the two motors plugged into ports A and B. Now I can't write A and B because that will make my robot move backwards. I need to write it as B, A. So just be aware of that. You might have to do the same as me. Uh, once we've got our ports set up there we just need to tell the movement motors how fast they need to move so again we write movement motors this time we write dot set default speed and putting an underscore between each of those three words now this function set default speed comes from the spike library and we can set any speed between 0 and 100 percent I'm going to max it out today at 100%, so feel free to put that in the brackets next to set default speed. Um, you've got an idea to put some comments in now, so if you forget what comments are, remember comments actually aren't part of your code. These are just, um, well these lines are just plain simple English explaining to others who read your code what's happening in your program. You always put a hashtag first, and that way the computer knows anything after that hashtag is just a comment, and it can be ignored by the computer when it runs the code. Um, so set the movement motor speed. All right, so we've got the port set up, we've got the speed set, we might as well get our robot moving now. So we're going to be using a new function here today, I'll tell you about in a sec. I'll just put a comment in first that says spin the robot on the spot. We're going to bring up our movement motors again. And the new function we're using today is called move underscore tank. So this move tank function, as I've mentioned before, comes from the spike library. And this move tank function, I'm not sure where the word tank comes from actually, but what it's going to do is it's going to allow us to send different amounts of power to the two motors we've got connected. Okay, and I'll show you how that works in a sec. First of all, you need to tell it, just like we've done in the past, how far we want our robot to move. So I'm going to make him move 60 centimeters today. So write in 60, put a comma, and then in quotation marks, put centimeters. Now, this is the new part. You need to first of all write in left underscore speed and tell the computer how much, basically, power you want to send to the left motor. So the left speed that we want it, or the speed that we want our left motor running at, can be anywhere between 0 and 100. I'm going to set it to minus 100. So it's going to go backwards at full speed. Um, we'll put a comma after that, and then we're going to do the right motor. So we write right speed equals, and I'm just going to write 100. So what we've got there is the left motor going backwards at 100% speed, and then the right motor going forwards at 100% speed. And due to the wheels or the motors spinning in different directions, that should have our robot turning on the spot, not actually moving anywhere. 
And that's it. So let's test that and see if it actually works. All right. So that worked pretty well for me. Spun around very quickly on the spot. So that is how you get your robot spinning very quickly on the spot. Now let's put this into a different situation. Now what we might do is have a little challenge where we'll get our robot to drive forward, say uh, 50 centimeters. Then we'll get it to do a 180 degree turn on the spot. So we'll be using that move tank function for that. And then we'll go back to where we started. All right, so I'm just going to delete that little section of code that we put in. And I'm going to start by moving forward uh, 50 centimeters. We already know how to do that from a previous video. So we call up the movement motors and we just use the move function. So movement motors dot move. We tell it how far we want to go forward using what unit of measurement, so that's centimeters. Put a comment in here that says move forward. And the next one will be the 180 degree spin. So after we drive forward half a meter, we need to use the move tank function to swing back around, um, facing back to the way we came from. So I'm gonna spin around 15 centimeters. That should get me around about a 180 degree turn. And I'll do what I did before. I'll power up my left motor with minus 100% speed. So it's going backwards. And the right motor will be powered with 100% speed going forward. And once we've done that 180 degree turn, we just need to go back the way we came. So movement motors dot move 50 centimeters and whoops, we're going forward 50 centimeters. So everything looks pretty good there. Forgot to put a comment in up here. So a 180 degree turn. Oops. All right, so that looks pretty good to me. Now, I actually, um, for this 180 degree turn, I actually did a little bit of testing beforehand. That's why I know to turn 15 centimeters using those speeds. But if you want to change it up a bit, by all means, try out some different numbers there to see what um, results you get. So I'm going to just test that out now and see if we've got our robot driving forward 50 centimeters spinning around 180 degrees on the spot and then going back 50 centimeters to where it came from. Let's give it a go. All right, that worked pretty well for me. So that's all I'm gonna show you in this video tutorial. Um, I was just gonna show you that move tank function. That's all I wanted you to be aware of. It's a really handy um, function for spinning your robot on the spot. I will see you in the next video tutorial.